Okay, so everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, so this is a talk about the endovascular treatment of stroke. No disclosure, so no investment in any companies I talk about. So uh, acute stroke um, is uh, very time intensive, it's, or very critical to approach quickly because uh, on average we lose 1.9 million neurons per minute during a stroke. So speed is very important. Um, in the ER, uh, radiographic imaging and blood work is done as quickly as possible to decide whether or not the stroke is hemorrhagic or, or ischemic. And, it, and neurologists and interventional neuroradiologists get together to try to figure out how best to treat it. So uh, I know Dr. Concha showed this already, but this is our protocol for uh, inclusion criteria for stroke intervention. So ischemic stroke with disabling neuro neurologic deficits with or without IVTPA, less than six hours, unless it's Basler greater than 12 hours, that's a different animal. And it has to be an M1 ICA or Basler occlusion proven by CTA or if it's a hyperdense MCA sign. Um, if it's after uh, six hours, there is a way to try to figure out if some sub small subset of people could benefit from intervention even though they're outside of this criteria. I'll talk about that in just a minute. So the first thing would be a CT of the head, non-contrast. Um, the reason that's the first and the most important is it's quick. Everybody's got it and it's very low cost. This is a CT scanner right here. And here's two CT scans. So CT scan is good for blood. So this is a, most likely a hypertensive hemorrhage, uh, not ischemic stroke. And this is a ischemic stroke in the left MCA distribution. So the hypodense area is edema and cell injury. And that right there is core. So that's irreversible injury. So evidence of numerous studies have shown that, that CT before the administration of acute stroke therapies can predict the functional outcome and risk of intracranial hemorrhage after uh, thrombectomy. Um, it, it can define the extent of changes that is important for predicting the, whether thrombolysis is, will help. Um, we look for small core infarcts to, beforehand and uh, some people use a one-third volume rule. Um, what we're doing here is called an aspect score. It's an Alberta Stroke Program early CT score. I know Dr. Concha talked about it real quick. It's a 10-point score using the non-contrast head CT before the first one when they come to the ER. And the reason it's, it's used is it's simple and reliable and reproducible. These are basically what, how it's done. There's a ganglionic level and a superganglionic level. And then each little label here designates where you get a point if it's normal. So that M1, that's M1 middle cerebral artery. I is insular ribbon, M2, M3 for the middle cerebral artery. And then here caudate head, lenticular, uh, lentiform nucleus, internal capsule. And then here the distal parts of the M MCA. So it's reliable and reproducible, low inter and intra, intra observer variability. Uh, scores less than seven are, are bad. That's a large infarct and tend not to do well with uh, intervention. And then uh, aspects eight to 10, do, they have shown to do well. So we use, what we use is seven uh, or greater. And I'll give an example of that record. So here is uh, a head CT. And here is an actual app on my smartphone that I use to help me. Um, so this is what you just evaluate each spot click on which spot is, is abnormal and it'll tell you your score. So here's an example. This is M1, so what I graded as the insular ribbon is missing, the M2 is missing, M3 is missing, internal capsule missing, and the part of the uh, lentiform nucleus is missing. So you lost, you only got two points there. And then here's a normal here of the upper level. And here's one that's actually showing darkness there. So the M6, M5, and M4 are all involved. So really, this is a very bad one. So they got a, a, an aspect of two. So you don't want to do anything with that one. So here is a non-contrast head CT. This is showing a hyperdense MCA sign. So that's really the only time that you should go ahead with thrombectomy without having a CTA. If you see this, you may or may not care about that because you already know there's a, there's a thrombus there. And here is the correlative uh, CTA showing the M1 here is cut off. 
Um, the next step, if the person is like over six hours, the one thing we're working on right now to in, add to our protocol is that some people benefit from thrombectomy even though they're past six hours. But how do we know who those people are? And one of the ways we can know is collaterals. So here, here's a, a CTA reconstruction from the aortic arch all the way up through the brain. And what the CTA does is give contrast, and then the CTA scans up following the contrast all the way up and gets in the first image, and then scans down and then scans back up. So this is three phases. The reason we do that is because we're looking for collaterals because everybody is built kind of differently. Um, the amount of collaterals you have determine how long you can last if you have one of these larger infarcts. Some people don't have, they don't have very many collaterals at all and an infarct in the MCA will result in a completed infarct within you know, 10 minutes or even maybe less and others have good collaterals that can pick up the slack, maybe not well enough. So knowing that can tell us who can last, who can uh, benefit from thrombectomy as well. So here we have the various, this is the anatomy showing the ACA, and, or I mean, excuse me, the carotid arteries, vertebral arteries, and then the circle of Willis. Up here shows the middle cerebral artery distribution, posterior cerebral artery distribution, anterior cerebral artery distribution on both of these. Now why put these in? Is because the collaterals that we're really talking about right now was where these arteries right here connect, here and here. And it, it, not all of us have a lot of them. Some of us have more, some of us had none, some of us have so many that they're actually all connected. And now they're not functionally significant or they're not hemodynamically significant for the most part because blood is kind of competing and coming, coming together at these locations and it just kind of stops and then it goes to the capillary beds. But if you have a blockage here, then the ACA comes around and fills reverse flow, fills these. And sometimes in the best collateral situation, a person could have an M1, uh, that big clot I showed you, and not barely even notice it. Maybe they have a TAA and that's it, and they don't even come to the hospital. And then years later, they get a CTA for some other reason. They're like, wow, you don't even have a left M1. And they just didn't even know. Uh, other people, you get an M1, they have no collaterals, boom, gone. This whole area is infarcted pretty quick. Um, so here's a, a grading system for collaterals we're going to start using. Uh, this is the three phase that I showed you before. Here's the M1 clot right there. And good scores is what we're looking for. And that's where this reverse flow in these arteries is so fast that basically there's really no delay between the either sides. And there's some small delay. And this is, we would use these kind of parameters that are kind of complicated. But what it boils down to is that the slower the collateral is getting around and the less of them there are, the lower your score. This is an example of somebody with a terrible score. Notice the MCA occlusion is here. There's really nothing over there, nothing over there. Getting a little bit here, just a little bit. That's going to be a completed infarct within minutes, maybe 20, 10, 15 minutes. They're not going to benefit from intervention by the time they get to the ER. So here's an example. This is a very interesting example. I love this. So this is the angiogram in a patient with a, with a right MCA stroke by sy symptoms and by CTA. Injected CAT scan die into the internal carotid artery. Coming up, this is the anterior cerebral artery going up. They've got an ACOM, and so they're, they're passing find the other anterior cerebral artery on the other side. But then there, here's the M1 thrombus. So it's definitely blocked. That's a big block. Now what I want you to watch now is the anterior cerebral artery. Now watch these collaterals come around. This patient did very well post thrombectomy. And here's why. Watch those collaterals. So that's helping them out. They're very symptomatic because the collaterals aren't quite good enough. So the brain itself is suffering, but there is definitely a good chance that you could open that artery back up and reverse that flow back to normal, and their brain will, you know, within 24 hours be back to normal, which would be an NIH of zero. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I took the arterial peak phase and superimposed it on the, uh, this late phase. There's the clot right there. So that's the clot I'm going for. This is the arterial phase. That's the late phase. The collaterals went all the way around to the clot. Those are really good collaterals right there. Here's the lateral. This is the side view. So here's that big empty spot right there. That's the MCA distribution, not getting arterial opacification in the time that we want it to be. There we go. So now watch these collaterals come around. So that's what we're looking for, the CT, the non-contrast head CT. It's not dark in this patient, that there's no completed infarct, there's no edema, because these collaterals are keeping up. And then with the, with the CTA multiphase, the, first, the next one I showed you with the collaterals, the phases in this one would probably be given them a four, a score of four, maybe three. It's not perfect because it's not so fast that it's, you can't even tell the difference. But it's fast, it's fast enough that he has a good score. 
So after throwing, so we, I did a thrombectomy, came up to here, grabbed that clot, and pulled it out. There it is right there. There's normal. See that MCA was there? I don't know if you guys caught it. I put it at normal, normal speed. The other ones were at fast speed. So there's that MCA distribution right there that is now re going back to the normal, normal, uh, normal flow. Now there's something else interesting about this, this angiogram, because this guy didn't have a complete recovery, it's a weakness. And the reason is pretty, pretty interesting because it's well, well demonstrated on this angiogram. So here's the internal carotid artery coming up, that's anterior cerebral artery, and then it comes out here. His clot was right here, and I'll show you that in a second. And these branches here are perforators, they don't have collaterals, okay? So if you block these, there's nothing else that's going to pick up the slack. And here's what they supply, the globus pallus, putamen, and caudate head or caudate nucleus, internal capsule, ba the basal ganglia is what it's called. And that's a junctional zone for cortex. So here's that clot. It's right there. So what's going on here? You can see it in the angiogram. The angiogram comes up, fills the MCA. Here's the perforators. So this is after I did the thrombectomy. And notice this whole area there is staining early. So the parenchymal phase is showing up. That's capillary. It's actually not even capillary, it's leaking. So the rest of it is arteries. But why is this staining there? Because he's got an infarct. So that's a permanent infarct that, that was infarcted by those perforators that could, didn't get any collaterals. The rest of his brain recovered great because we got that clot out and restored that reflow that was getting help from that reverse flow collaterals. But these perforators, they were, they were left out in the cold. So there are a few ways that we can do a thrombectomy. The, the kind of the first FDA approved device was called the Mercy. I'll show that in a second. Then came the penumbra system. Then recently, the, the stent retrievers that Dr. Concha mentioned earlier. These really, really revolutionized stroke treatment. And then penumbra also came out with some very good catheters that also help. Uh, so here's the Mercy system, basically a corkscrew. That was the first rendition. Second rendition, they turned it and add some, add some uh, uh, fibers. And then back to the straight. And what you do is you take this corkscrew all the way out to the clot, release it, un un unravel it in the clot, and then try to drag the clot out. Here is the Mercy device inside the middle cerebral artery, and here's the clot that they dragged out with it. It works okay, uh, but not as good as, as the newer systems. So here's the penumbra system. Penumbra system is an aspiration system. Um, the catheters, come, they're very long, they're very flexible, and they're, they have a good caliber, but they don't collapse when you put negative pressure on them. Now that sounds kind of, maybe, I don't know if that sounds simple or not, but it's not simple at all. Uh, to, to create some catheter that can track all the way into the brain and tortuous arteries, so it has to be flexible, has to have a good caliber because you want to produce negative pressure on it, and you don't want it to collapse when you put the negative pressure on it. So that, that, that's a, definitely an engineering challenge and took a lot of years to come up with. And the penumbra system in whole comes also with these things, which are called separators, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. And then these catheters are then hooked up to this pump, and this pump actually pumps blood uh, in, in reverse, sucks it right out of the, uh, out of the brain at the clot. So you take the uh, penumbra system all the way up to the clot, and in the typical or the, uh, the way this company recommends doing it is you use the separator, you stick it in and out, agitating it like this as the pump is sucking and you clear out the clot that way. Now, I don't do that myself. Um, I've found this technique to be faster, easier, simpler. Uh, what you do is it's called, this is the, somebody called it the ADAPT technique, but actually it's just aspiration. You take this very good distal access per, uh, penumbra system catheter, guide it all the way up to the clot, grab a 60 cc syringe, pull negative pressure on it, cork the clot, and just pull it right out. That's fast, quick, it works really well. So here's uh, an example of a non-contrast head CT. Here's uh, a hyperdense MCA sign. There's the occlusion right there on a CTA. And so we took the, I took the uh, aspiration catheter all the way up to the clot. Here's where it stops. This is a different branch right here. That's the anterior temporal artery. But uh, the, the clot is right there, and that's after thrombectomy. Here's the clot right there. So the solitaire devices, they are a stent on a stick. Um, this is their design here. They were originally designed for uh, aneurysm treatment. 
they were detachable. You would, you would unload them right o over through the artery where the aneurysm is and then leave them there. But th that didn't work so well, so they then tried this, and this seemed to work really well. So the way you do is you take your catheter all the way up past the clot, and then you back the catheter up, deploying the, the uh, solitaire across the clot like this, letting it incorporate, and then dragging it out. And here's an example right here. This is the internal carotid artery coming up, middle cerebral artery occlusion. Here's the, the stick, so that's the, the, the wire. This solitary device starts here and goes all the way to these tines right there. And you can't see it because it's not radio opaque. But when you deploy it, it tends to push the clot out to the periphery, and you actually have an opening where the brain gets a drink of water, is what we say, because then you're actually perfusing the brain. Not all of it, because there are other branches that are being blocked by this, but some of it. And this is post. See, these branches here didn't show up before, and Drew, Drew uh, took the clot right out. Here's the solitaire with the clot on it, and pieces of clot. And the other one is a Trevo solitaire retrieval device. Um, ba very similar design, uh, it tapers on the end. It's radio opaque, so you can actually see it. And again, here's the internal carotid artery coming up, middle cerebral artery occlusion right there. The solitary device is radio opaque. You can see it coming all the way around in the clot, and it is reperfusing while the clot is in there. Post right there, open. So there's the solitary device with the clot. This one is a little different, so uh, it's a basilar occlusion. The vertebral artery is coming up this way. Basilar artery should be right here. This is in the back part of the brain. You can see the cerebellum outlined right here from the branches that are actually perfusing. So the first thing I did was use a solitary device, and you can see the solitaire coming up this way all the way around like that, and there's the end of it. That's the end of it right there. And, you, and again, you're getting flow restoration temporarily. After pulling out this clot right here, there was this very tight stenosis right here, probably from atherosclerosis, that then re-thrombosed within just a few minutes. So then took a balloon up, angioplasted it. That's post-angioplasty. And then placed a wingspan stent. Wingspan stent is the only stent that's uh, approved, FDA approved for intracranial stenosis. Has a very strict, uh, did I include that? Has very strict uh, qualifications to use it. Um, but in the acute setting, you, know, you, you just use it if you need it. <coughs> Here's post stenting. Here's the solitary, or the, uh, the uh, wingspan and its balloon, the gateway. Uh, I, I think it's important to at least mention that, that the FDA only approves it for patients 22 to 80 years old. They have to have two or more strokes despite aggressive medical management. Recent stroke can't be any sooner than seven days. Stenosis has to be between 70 and 99 percent. And they have to have had a good recovery from the strokes of a rank in less than three. All right, that is it. Any questions?